as I mentioned earlier, uh, I work for the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance. And so we've been uh, very busy working from home. Um, and I thought it would uh, be helpful to kind of describe a little bit about what my organization does and uh, the work that we've been trying to do in uh, looking at uh, coronavirus as it relates to Baltimore's neighborhoods. So we have been in the process of putting together kind of a COVID-19 uh, data portal and I was very excited to show it off and I just got a bunch of edits today. So I unfortunately won't be able to share the full data hub, but I would like to sh kind of show off one of the, the things that we were doing. So um, is it possible for me to screen share? Is that okay? All right. Don't wanna be completely taken over here. Um, just taken over a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I work for the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance. Uh, really briefly, what we do is uh, partner with different data creating agencies, both in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland, and we pull together data and information, analyze this uh, spatial data, and present uh, a report called Vital Signs every year, which is a look at about 150 different community statistics or indicators. So we look at 55 areas in Baltimore City, we call them community statistical areas, and we push out all this data in a tabular format as well as a spatial format on our website. So lately we've been kind of kicking ass at some Esri products. <laughs> so we have been putting together a lot of different open data portals using uh, the Esri hub. So we were hoping to have a coronavirus thing uh, kind of put together today, but got a little bit behind. But we do publish all of our uh, data indicators, uh, since this is all open data, onto a portal where you can access the indicators either by topic area. So as you can see here, we look at eight different topics. So census, so who are living in different neighborhoods, housing and community development. So things like the real estate market, uh, where are homes vacant in the city of Baltimore, uh, children and family health, so births and death statistics, crime and safety, pretty self-explanatory, workforce and economic developments, where are businesses, where are employees, uh, arts and culture, so looking at things like arts and culture businesses, public arts murals, education and youth, and sustainability. So you can search for different statistics either by a keyword, uh, by uh, clicking on one of these different topic areas, and we also use story maps for some narratives of just writing up some of these things. And so since we have all this data kind of available, we decided to uh, grab the state of Maryland, their, um, their coronavirus cases by zip code layer, and kind of overlay it on top of all these different community indicators that we have. And so we put together a, uh, this was our first product, was a zip code map. So this is literally just pulling in the, uh, the feature layer that Maryland Department of Health has published and throwing in these indicators. Let me switch over here. So every day at 10 a.m., the map itself gets updated by the Maryland Department of Health, and we just plug into that and uh, have a refresh. And so we have visualized uh, for each of the zip codes a proportional uh, symbol. So the larger the dot, obviously, the more cases you have in a zip code. And then behind that, that is our community statistical area. So these are clusters of census tracts with these different statistics. So uh, we've got things like uh, population statistics. So looking at older adults, since this is a more vulnerable population. So we've got that visualized. And for all these maps, uh, the darker the color is a higher percentage. Um, and then if you click on all these, you can see the legend. We also look at the number of school-aged children in a community, uh, thinking about kids that are no longer in school, they're at home. And so you can uh, just kind of click through some of these and see uh, different age stats. We also present some of our race and ethnicity information. So uh, black uh, African-American residents in the city of Baltimore, white, Hispanic. 
And then we also decided to kind of dig into other indicators that would be around housing insecurity, uh, economic insecurity. So looking at things like uh, the percentage of households that spend more than 30% of their income on rent, um, households that earn under about $25,000 a year. So these are, these are uh, you know, communities that have high percentages of their residents, uh, their households that are really kind of struggling. And this is, you know, before coronavirus, this is data from the American Community Survey um, that is representative through 2018. But then also things like percentage of households with no vehicles available. So thinking about um, the uh, folks that do, don't have a car, so they're forced to take public transportation. This is a huge issue when you have the MTA kind of cutting back some of their, their service. So those essential workers that need to get to their jobs, um, you know, parents that need to get their kids to the doctor's office, you know, th this, is, this is a huge issue for a lot of communities. And then lastly, digital access. So who has access to the internet at home, like actually on a computer, so not just on a smartphone. So this is incredibly important for anybody that needs to work from home or for kids that need to do some learning. So uh, really quickly, this was just uh, a, a map that we kind of put together. We have a little bit of information in the, the details section about some of these indicators, how they relate to coronavirus. And uh, we've been using this map as kind of the basis for other projects. So we do have in development right now a dashboard that is looking at crime in Baltimore. So there have been a couple Baltimore Sun articles that suggest that uh, violent crime is kind of stagnant. So it's kind of similar to this time last year, but violent crime is coming way down. So thinking about where are crimes happening in the city and what are some of these trends. So that's something we're putting together, as well as a few other infographs on things like lives saved by folks staying home uh, during during this time. So uh, that's kind of what we have um, our gears turning. And we're also thinking about putting together uh, some, some resources. So we don't know if this would be a dashboard, if this would be some story maps, but looking at some of the city of Baltimore, their 911 data sets. So who's calling 911? 311, so this is non-emergency uh, city customer service requests, and then also 211, so people calling United Way for help with housing or childcare, uh, health, uh, anything related to coronavirus, so seeing what are kind of the impacts at that neighborhood level for Baltimore. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And what we also want to do, um, in addition to kind of using some of these data sets that we have already, pulling in data from uh, Open Baltimore and other open data sources in the city, is to think about how can we visualize and how can we also tell the story about OpenStreetMap and some of the work that we're going to be doing tonight of providing this additional context of what's going on in neighborhoods. So thinking about some of these areas that are particularly hard hit. So this one census tract out here, this is 21215. So how are the businesses affected in these communities that have really high rates of coronavirus? Are they changing their hours? Are there new places that can be added to the map where folks are receiving uh, community outreach, be it you know a new place to pick up food or groceries or uh, new healthcare sites? Um, or anything that could be changing in response to the coronavirus. So one of the things that I'm hoping to do is to be able to put together uh, you know, a little bit of information about how to kind of continue the work that we're going to be doing tonight onto this open data portal. So so, um, again, I work for the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance. So if you want to follow along with us at any time, we're on social media, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook at BNIA. JFI. So hopefully tomorrow, I think it'll be, we'll, we'll share the URL for our coronavirus open data portal. So I hope that's something that everyone will check out if you kind of want to see what's going on here in Baltimore. So uh, I think that about wraps it up for me. Does anyone have any questions about any of this? My organization, the data, the map?